Hey guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so, in this video, we're going to be talking about our systems across the eastern Pacific and Atlantic basins. So, we have two disturbances one designated as an invest over in the Atlantic, and uh, they are going to be affecting portions of the Caribbean. And then, over in the eastern Pacific, we have what is now Tropical Storm Pamela. So, we're going to be looking at all these systems in detail. And so, before I do so, so let's start off with tropical storm pamela so this was what was previously known as a uh, tropical depression number 16 and so in espanol la depresión 16 se convirtió en tormenta tropical pamela los vientos son actualmente de 50 millas por hora se prevé su fortalecimiento Para la última parte de la semana, es probable que toque tierra en el noreste de México como un gran huracán. Es importante que no se encuentre a lo largo de la costa una zona propensa a inundaciones cuando se acerque Pamela. Es probable que pronto se implementen alertas y advertencias y lo mantendré informado. All right, and so Pamela has sustained winds of 50 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the west-northwest at 12 miles per hour. So we're seeing here that by tomorrow it is expected to strengthen into a hurricane and then eventually into a major hurricane. So in yesterday's update, I said that uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this manages to become a major hurricane because its peak winds at the time uh, were expected to be just shy of a Category 3. And so here we have the National Hurricane Center now expecting that Pamela is going to be achieving major hurricane status. And so if you're in the northwestern portion of Mexico, please take necessary precautions and stay safe. So currently there are no watches or warnings that are in place but they're likely to be probably by later today and after Pamela makes landfall it is going to rapidly weaken as it accelerates inland and it's also going to be picking up in its acceleration so it's not going to be lingering around for a very very long time so all of that show and thunderstorm activity is going to dissipate as the system makes its way inland and so let's take a look at it on satellite and so we're seeing here that it is looking quite compact a lot better than it did yesterday as a depression of course so conditions are favorable to enable this to have an even better satellite presence presentation as time goes by and as the system is going to be strengthening. And so in terms of what our models are expected, we're seeing here that we have quite a bit available. Majority expect that Pamela will become a hurricane and we have quite a few expecting a uh, probably category 2 and then we have 3 expecting a category 3-1 taking it very very close to being a category 4 hurricane so i don't think that that is impossible for it to become something very significant because it has been strengthened but it paused a bit due to a little bit of sheer uh, interference with the system but aside from that nothing is really affecting the system much and so the conditions ahead of it look quite well to enable all that intensification that is anticipated so again if you're in portions of northwestern mexico please take necessary precautions and stay safe and it is likely that watches and warnings will be out probably by later today and so now let's go ahead and go over into the atlantic basin so we have two disturbances one designated as invest 93 l and that is the disturbance that is currently located to the east of the windward islands so let us take a look at these individually so first up we have this one here a bit to the south of the dominican republic and we're seeing that it has a 20 percent chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone during the next couple of days and so it is expected to make its way to the north and development is not imminently anticipated while the system is going to be in the caribbean but once it makes its way uh, into the atlantic waters uh to the north of hispaniola that is where we could see some development taking place of this system here so it is possible that this could even linger around for a bit and so if you're in portions of the Turks and Caicos Islands, you want to keep an eye out because while the system is going to be drifting northward, where conditions might be a little bit more conducive for development, there might still be heavy rainfall and some gusty winds associated with this system here. But let's go ahead and take a look at, at it on satellite. And so we're seeing here that we have most of that shower and thunderstorm activity associated with this system actually dissipating. So it is possible that we could have more convection developing 
I'm just going to be making its way up to the north as I said. And then now let's go ahead and take a look at that next disturbance which is Invest 93L. And so we're seeing here that this disturbance here also given a 20% chance to potentially develop and it is going to be making its way generally to the west and then to the west northwest during the next couple of days. And so uh, even though this might not become a tropical cyclone while it is going to be in the vicinity of the Lesser Antilles, regardless, it is still going to bring some periods of very heavy rainfall along with some gusty winds across most of the islands there in the island chain. So please uh, be cautious of that if you're there. So heavy rainfall is likely as a result of this. And so if we have this potentially developing into something, then it is likely to acquire the name Wanda if it does manage to achieve tropical storm status as that name is the next to be used and also the final on or normal list of names for this hurricane season. And so by the midweek it is expected to arrive at Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands so it's going to be bringing all that moisture into that vicinity and inducing uh, more inclement and unstable weather there. Alright, so let us look at favorability ahead of these two systems. So first up, let us go ahead and take a look at the wind shear map. And we have the different colors that indicate the favorability of the shear. So we have the green, that means favorable. The yellow, that means neutral. And the red, that means unfavorable. So we're seeing here that the Caribbean is uh, blanketed by quite a bit of unfavorable shear. So this is not going to really aid in the development of our systems, uh, especially that first wave that is located south of Hispaniola. So once it makes its way up more north where conditions are expected to become a little bit more conducive, then we could see it looking better and probably organize and develop into something. But as of now, the Caribbean is not so favorable. We have all that unfavorable shear setting in that usually helps to cut off the thunderstorm. So that is the reason the satellite presentation of that disturbance is not so well. And it is really going to be the same story for Invest 93L once it is going to be in those unfavorable conditions during the next couple of days. But as I said, regardless of development, it is going to be bringing some inclement weather to portions of the lesser Antilles. And so looking at the Taharan earlier map now, so we have the different colors that indicate how dense the dust is. So the lighter yellow indicates less dry air while we have the uh, dark orange going to that red shade indicating a lot of dust and so we're not seeing much uh, being across portions of the Caribbean or in the vicinity of Invest 93L but we do have that pocket behind it extending from Africa going westward and so of course ocean temperatures are warm and will remain so for at least most of the hurricane season especially in portions such as the Caribbean and in the vicinity of the Bahamas and so guys that is really it for this updated video on the tropics so it is possible that we could have uh, development of our two disturbances but as of right now the chance is quite low for that to happen and we also have tropical storm Pamela expected to become a hurricane and make landfall along the Mexican coastline at the latter part of this week and so guys I will keep you updated on the latest as time goes by and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can and of course remember to always be weatherwise